Hello everyone and welcome. Perhaps you have seen the video of the electric Ford F-150 pulling 1.25 million pounds. And this was a brilliant marketing idea by Ford and it was a wonderfully executed stunt. So props to Ford for pulling it off. However, I think it might give you the dangerous idea that an electric Ford F-150 can actually tow 1.25 million pounds, which in this video I'm going to demonstrate why I believe it cannot. Now, it was a real stunt, so the truck really did pull 1.25 million pounds. However, much like a well-executed magic trick, you know, you might see a magic trick and be like, wow, that was amazing. But then if the magician explains to you how they did it, you're like, okay, well, it's not that cool. And I believe the same thing is kind of going on here with Ford and towing this 1.25 million pounds. So once I explain to you how it all works, you'll probably be like, okay, wow, it's not that cool. It was very cool and it was a very clever idea by Ford, so I'm glad they did it. Uh, but I want to explain the science behind it. So in this video, we're going to learn why this electric F-150 was capable of pulling 1.25 million pounds on a railway, but why I believe it is not capable of doing so on the road. Okay, so you're probably wondering, you know, what is the insanely high force that's going to be required in order to pull this 1.25 million pound load? And so our problem right here, we're trying to figure out what is the force required in order to move this load right here. And so we have an electric Ford F-150 for the purpose of, of this video. We're just going to assume that it has four wheel drive, that all the wheels are driven. It could probably do it even with two wheel drive, but we're just going to make that assumption. We have a tow strap going back to the load, which is 1.25 million pounds. We'll get more into the toe strap later on in the video. So this is our problem here and we're trying to figure out what is the force required in order to move that mass. So our equation to figure out this force, force equals the coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by the normal force. So we have this blue load right here. It's a circle, it's a wheel. We're trying to pull it along with a certain force, that force being F there. Now there's resistance from the ground to moving this load. So there's a ground reaction force pushing against us when we're trying to pull that thing over. So this is what is represented by our coefficient of rolling resistance. And so the coefficient of rolling resistance is the ratio of the force required to pull a certain amount of weight. So for example, what does that mean? If you had a coefficient of rolling resistance of 0.1, it would take one pound to pull a 10 pound mass because your ratio is 0.1. So one pound to 10 pounds, 0.1. That's what that coefficient of rolling resistance is. And so that plays the critical role here in how can we get this load moving. Now, the coefficient of rolling resistance changes depending on what you're using as your wheel and what you have as your ground. So the less wheel deformation and the less ground deformation you have, the lower your coefficient of rolling resistance is, meaning the less force you need in order to pull a certain load. So for example, we're going to use a, say that we need to pull 10,000 pound load. So we've got a regular pneumatic tire on sand that has a coefficient of rolling resistance of, of about 0.3 meaning in order to pull 10,000 pounds, we need a 3,000 pound force to move that wheel along. If we were to put a tire on the road, that dramatically reduces that coefficient of rolling resistance, and suddenly we can pull a 10,000 pound force with just 150 pounds of force. So you're starting to see where this is going. If you were to have a steel railroad wheel on pavement, uh, then that's a terrible idea because you're going to destroy the road. So you don't want to do that. I don't know what the numbers are for it, which is why you see steel railroad railroad wheels on steel railroad rails. And so this steel on steel interaction is great uh, because both the steel wheel and the steel rail have very little deformation. And as a result, they have a very low coefficient of rolling resistance, about 0 0.0015, meaning to pull a 10,000 pound weight, all you need is 15 pounds of force to do it. All right, let's do some math. So now that we know what all of our variables are, we can calculate what this force is in order to be able to pull this 1.25 million pound load. And so force is equal to the coefficient of rolling resistance. We're using 0 0.0015. It could actually be less than this, uh, but we're going to be conservative here with our estimates and say it's 0 0.0015 and we need to pull a 1.25 million pound load. So we multiply that across and the force required in order to pull 1.25 million pounds is 1,000 875 pounds of force. So not all that insanely high of a number, uh, but we don't yet know 
is this F-150 capable of actually pulling that? So what is the maximum force that this electric F-150 can pull? Now, based on traction alone, we're going to look at this equation right here. The force, that, the maximum force that this truck can move forward with will be equal to the frictional coefficient of the tires multiplied by the normal force. And so we're going to assume it has enough power. I have no doubt that it does. Uh, and you can always use gears if needed to have more torque at the ground. So no problems there. So the force is going to be equal to, let's say our frictional coefficient is 1.0, nice conservative estimate. And then our uh, normal force here, let's say the truck weighs 5,000 pounds. Now it may weigh a little bit more, it may weigh a little bit less. We don't know how much it weighs, but that's in line with a current uh, Super Crew Cab F-150. So this means the maximum force that this F-150, assuming it has four wheel drive, can move forward and pull is 5,000 pounds. And so obviously 5,000 pounds is greater than 1,875 pound force. And so as a result, this thing is capable of pulling a 1.25 million pound load. How cool is that? Now, if you're not sad already, uh, you know, from being disappointed that it only took 1,875 pound force in order to move this thing, uh, you're about to get more sad. So here we go. Let's take that train. We're going to take it off those railroad tracks. We're going to put it on pneumatic tires, so road car tires, and we're going to stick it on a real road. And so now, instead of this 0.0015, our coefficient of rolling resistance is 0.015. So the force required in order to pull it is multiplied by 10. So now we need an 18,750 pound force in order to move this, this 1.25 million pounds on the road. And unfortunately, our maximum here is basically just going to be the weight of the truck itself. So if you load it up with a ton of stuff, you might be able to do it. But as is, this F-150 is very far away from this 18,750 number. So it would not even be able to budge that train if it was sitting on a road on road tires. Now, realistically, as tire pressures go up, which you would need to do if you had a crazy high load like 1.25 million pounds, then the frictional coefficient or the rolling resistance coefficient is going to decrease. And so as a result of that decreasing coefficient of rolling resistance, this number will be less. But even if you were to chop that in by a third, uh, then you would be at six to 50 pounds. So if you had a coefficient rolling resistance of 0 0.005 instead of 0 0.0, uh, one five, one third of that, you still don't have enough force in order to do it. You could throw some sandbags in the back. Hopefully you've got enough torque, uh, you know, put a thousand pound payload in there and you might be able to make it work. Uh, but the unfortunate news here is if you were to do this, realistically, this number right here uh, means you could not pull that 1.25 million pounds on a road. Now here's what I think is the most mind-blowing thing about all of this. In the video, Ford states that they are traveling at 4.5 miles per hour. So that got me wondering, how much power is actually needed in order to travel at 4.5 miles per hour with a 1.25 million pound load? And so thankfully the equation is pretty simple. To find out power, we simply multiply force by velocity. We've already calculated our force and our velocity is 4.5 miles per hour. So if we do that math, multiply the force by the velocity, we get 16.8 kilowatts or 22.5 horsepower. 22.5 horsepower. That is all that is needed to maintain a speed of 4.5 miles per hour. Now to get up to that speed is going to take more power. It takes a lot of power to accelerate. Uh, but in order to maintain that speed of 4.5 miles per hour, all that Ford F-150 has to put down is 22.5 horsepower to keep that thing moving. That is pretty cool. So now my question is, was it necessary for the F-150 to be electric? And certainly it helps that it's electric because electric motors at zero RPM, when that truck isn't even moving, it's going to have all of its torque available and be able to start accelerating that giant mass, uh, you know, at a reasonable rate. That's very cool. Uh, but I think the danger here from a marketing standpoint is that instead of this being a comparison saying, hey, look what our truck can do, your truck can't do this. Uh, instead, it's an illusion where we're saying, hey, check out what our truck can do yours could also do it. 
Uh, so that's the sad news here is this this is not something unique to this electric f-150 i think plenty of vehicles out there whether they're gas diesel whatever tons of vehicles out there could have done this experiment because it was done on a railroad track with steel wheels on a steel rail and that enables you to have this really low force that you're able to pull uh, that mass with so it's a very neat stunt uh, but once you kind of understand it, it's like womp 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 everybody could probably do this now i want to talk about the toe strap for a moment because the top comments on this video as i was looking at them uh, they were all saying wow this is an amazing toe strap what in the world how does a toe strap uh, it capable of pulling such a crazy high load well as we have demonstrated uh, within this video the force required in order to start pulling this thing is 1875 pounds of force so you only need a 2000 pound toe strap in order to make it work out there's nothing fancy about the toe strap uh, pretty much any toe strap out there will probably be able to do it as long as it's rated for at least 2000 pounds now there's a bunch of other variables out there that are important uh, unfortunately they're just boring so you know in this video i focused on the very exciting one which is that coefficient of rolling resistance which makes this stunt possible uh, but there's all kinds of other reasons why you know an electric ford f-150 is not going to pull 1.25 million pounds First of all, if you go on any sort of incline, once you're on an incline, that train is going backwards. That truck is just being dragged along with it. Uh, second of all, you need to have braking, and this thing is not going to have the brakes to stop a 1.25 million pound mass. In fact, it was using a tow strap. Uh, it wasn't directly connected. If it were to try to slow down, obviously they're having to use the brakes on this uh, rather than the truck itself. The truck itself is not going to be capable of slowing down that insanely high mass. Also, you're going to need a ton of power in order to be able to accelerate. Uh, you need an insane amount of cooling. If you're going to be making all that power, you know, you can get the thing moving. It's just going to take forever to do it. A low force will work. It just means you're going to accelerate slowly. And then, of course, the parts durability of everything involved in order to pull a mass that high. Uh, it's going to be uh, quite insane. So all of the other variables, I think, are kind of boring, but I feel like worth mentioning. So we're throwing them in there at the end. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below. And again, I do think it was a very cool idea by Ford. So props to them for pulling it off.